Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Charbonneau. I'm a senior IT consultant and also the author on Java e support pattern at blogspot.com. So today's video will be about the Java Verbal GC tutorial. This will be basically a presentation on how you can enable Verbal GC from your Eclipse ID and also I'll be focusing on how you can perform the analysis. Well, keep in mind this tutorial is not intended to provide you with a deep dive on the Java heap and everything, but I'll still be covering some of the basics. Future uh, tutorial will include also uh, deeper analysis techniques like heap dumb analysis as well. So welcome to this tutorial and I hope you will appreciate the quality. Now let's start with a quick overview. What is VerboGC and why is it useful? Well, the, the verbal GC from our perspective is very crucial and, and it's one, in case you saw some of the past article uh, from my blog, this is one of the things basically that Java developers should know. So not only support individuals, but also Java developers because verbal GC basically provides you with out of the box uh, detail on your Java heap memory footprint. So basically lower level of detail of each of your memory space from the Java heap that is dumped to the, the actual log. It also provides detail on the Java garbage collection process. So you can basically read the logs and determine the frequency of the garbage collection, the interval, especially regarding the major collection, which can be quite intrusive for your ap application and can degrade the performance quite significantly. So now let, let's move on to the simple program uh, using the Eclipse ID. So here's the snapshot of the screen for the simple Java program. Well, in order to understand the Java Verbo GC, I always recommend to learn this process using a very simple Java program. Instead of jumping right away to a very complex Java E program, with uh, gigabytes of memory footprint, it's always easier to understand via a simple example that you can write yourself, run quickly, and then learn these techniques via this program before you jump into a more complex task, right? So what you see here is a very simple program that I created, which I call GVM Out of Memory Error Simulator. Basically what this program does is quite straightforward. It's basically just trying to initialize and populate what I call a leaking hash map with string data, ultimately triggering an automatic condition. So as you know, when you allocate object like this in a hash map, these objects will accumulate in the Java heap. And eventually, depending on your capacity, you will run out of memory. So that, that's what basically this problem is trying to simulate here. So let me show you as a starting point, the argument. So in Eclipse IDE, you can basically just inspect right in your arguments of your program. As you can see, I did configure the program with an XMX of one gigabyte, meaning that the Java heap total capacity is up to one gig. Now, in order to enable Verbo GC, Verbo, it's very simple. It, you just need basically to add dash verbo gc parameter and then you have some extra parameters you can enable as well those are optional but i highly recommend that you do that basically to add some uh, additional details the timestamp on top of it and more impor importantly to redirect the output to a separate log otherwise if you don't do that the verbo gc output will be redirected to the standard output which is not too user friend friendly there in terms of my GRE, as you can see, I'm using GDK 1.7, which and I'm using the Hotspot GVM on Windows OS. So this is uh, basically my specification. Future videos and article, I'll I'll be showing you some example on Linux OS or Unix-based OS as well. But for the verbal GC analysis. It doesn't really matter if you're uh, enabling that on uh, Windows OS, Linux, AIX and others, uh, the, that verbal GC is basically unique or cross-platform. So back to our program, let me run one iteration. So I'm going to run the program right now. 
so this is the output that you see here and my expectation as you can see given the number of iteration my expectation is that I'll be generating an automatic condition so you can see promise it running and there you go you see Java heap space, auto memory error, Java heap space. Simulator is done. So this is what we wanted to generate. Because when you enable Verbo GC, it will provide you some statistic on your Java heap. But it's it's definitely more interesting if you simulate auto memory on top of it because we'll be, we'll be able to analyze the garbage collection process. So auto memory Java heap space for people not familiar with this, it basically just means you're running out of Java heap. And by Java heap, it means basically if you're using the default concurrent collector, it means both your young gen space and old gen space is depleted, right? A quick a quick refresh on the GVM, right? You know, on the GVM, you have the Java young gen, old gen space. You have also the perm gen space used for the class metadata, and obviously you have the native heap, some memory allocated for the thread or some of the internal GVM native. Uh, computing task. Now we know that our program failed out of memory error. Our footprint or capacity was up to a gig. So obviously this program attempted to allocate more than one gig of memory and ran out of memory with Java e space as, as I just explained. Now let's go back to the original meeting and understand now the verbo GC. Now let's go back to our program. What I did is a quick addition of XMS to one gig just to simplify the analysis of our BOGC. See what it means is that I'm allowing still one gig of memory, but the minimum is also set to one gig. So you'll be able to see that footprint allocation a little bit easier there. So let me open the verbo GC. Okay. So that's basically the output for a hotspot 1.7 VM. As, as you remember, we enabled the timestamp in the first column. So you have the timestamp basically in second at the time you start GVM and then you can see the incremental value in seconds, right? So this way you're able to see the elapsed time in between your interval of garbage collection. Especially for you're dealing with excessive garbage collection, you will see, uh, for example, a lot of major collection. You have, you will be able to see that from the Robo GC log. Ideally, you should not have too many major collection because these are more intrusive to the GVM from a pause time perspective, CPU, and so on. In the Verbo GC, you will always be um, you basically you will see a split of minor collection, which are identified as capital GC, right? And major collection, which are identified as full GC. You should see much more frequency of minor collection, ideally, right? Because minor collection, if you remember in the GVM, as I explained, the minor collection stand more for the young gen space. So the, the short-lived object that your program is created or initially allocated right in the young gen space. And if these objects survives collection, then they will get promoted to the old gen space. Which is why we call it short lived object. Basically, if you create local variables or temporary data structure, these objects will get cleared out by the GVM fairly quickly via the minor collection. Minor collection are, are much faster to clean up because typically the footprint is smaller, right? The Java heap space for the young is always typically smaller than the old gen space. So if we're back to our program, at the time 0 to 0.2, when we just fired up the program, we can see a few minor collection which happened. Remember, our program was very quickly allocating a lot of memory, right? So which is why you see some allocation happening on the young gen, right? And eventually you will see some uh, some major collection happening here. So let's see how this whole thing is working. So when you look at these line, you have to always to read from left to right. So what it means is this: on the left side, 
of the arrow it means this this was the memory footprint for the young gen space before the collection meaning at that time right before the minor collection you had about 262 262 megabyte of memory allocated in the young gen space after the minor collection now that footprint got reduced to 43 megs which is good news meaning you are the GM was able to clean up some of the memory and a total capacity is 300 megs why is it 300 megs for the young gen well that, keep in mind that's a typical ratio okay when you don't specify anything and tuning on that side the GVM will automatically break down your Java heap capacity in two silos, young gen and old gen, with typically a one thirty percent rate ratio, right? So, for example, in our case, with a one gig, if you remember, right? With a one gig of heap footprint, the Java heap or the GVM created a young gen space of about 305 megs. The rest of the memory, around 700 megabytes, was allocated for the old gen space, or if, or if you prefer, your long live object. So this is totally expected behavior. So that's the first portion of the minor collection. The second portion will give you a total heap footprint. So that's a total combined young and old gen, right? And again, I'm not even talking about the perm gen at this point, right? I, I did not, as you remember from the, we did not specify anything, so we're using the default perm gen parameters. This is not really in scope for this topic. Perm gen is more the class metadata. We're not simulating any problem here at the perm gen level, so no need to worry about this one for now. So what it's telling us at this point with the money collection is that, well, the footprint was 262 and then you're you're back to 144 after so 43 for the young gen and 144 total meaning we already have some more located to the old gen as we can see here right and then this is giving you the elapsed time for the money collection as you can see the money collection are extremely fast 0 0.0.4 0 .0 second and then you have the user time as well system and real user time in second here now let's look because remember our program to generate our memory condition so we're expecting a lot of my major collection at some point right this is exactly what's happening look at this full GC full GC full GC totally expected like almost every half second full GC over and over and over which is normal since this is what we're trying to demonstrate with this program so what it means is that very quickly because our program thread was still working in progress very quickly, that memory was still retained by that thread. So that memory footprint got, or these objects were promoted fairly quickly to the old gen space, which is why you will see a lot of major collection and now you will be able to see the old gen. As you can see, the minor collection will not give you footprint on the old gen, right? This is more focused on the young gen, but the major collection will take care of the old gen space, not the minor collection, which is why the minor collection is more efficient, right? The minor collection, as I just explained, by design it has a smaller footprint, right? 30% of your total capacity by default. So by default, it's much faster to clean up, right? The old gen is always your biggest java heat space so obviously it's always slower to clean up the old gen is not cleaned up with the mana collection that's the whole purpose of splitting the memory space right because you don't want to to spend too much time going against all the old gen space for nothing right the major collection will take care of both of the entire gvm which is why when you do your analysis from a footprint perspective let's say you want to detect memory leak the more we leak by their nature will be leaking in the old gen space, right? 
long live objects so let's say you have an ash map which accumulate memory over time every hour you also have a growing pattern from your old gen space so in order to do that analysis the best way is always to analyze your footprint after a major collection so let's see an example of this this one so at time 3.9 second we had a major collection same pattern here first let's start with the young gen that was the memory footprint before the major collection 262 after we're down to 266 so pretty much we weren't able to clean up much here old gen what we care about this is where it's getting interesting as you can see the old gen capacity is 700 megs as i just explained now the troubling part is this before the major collection, we were about 700 megs, which makes sense, right? Because GVM will always at some point grew up to its max capacity before a major collection. The troubling part is this. After the major collection, we're still around 700 megs. So very, very, very close to depletion, which is normal, as I explained, because that's our problem is trying to demonstrate. So that's what you may see, let's say, if you're supporting uh, production environments, or you're facing issue with your application this is what you have to understand look at your old gen make sure you see how much memory was cleaned up after right before after if the after is going down just to about a few percent it means you're really struggling right the GVM is struggling it's not cleaning up much this and what's the side effect well problem is that GVM is not able to clean up much so it has to fire again the full GC again and again and again you see that here it's all the same pattern you see the old gen after it's always always close to the max right and at some point as you saw from the Eclipse we run out of memory completely Okay, so that's the old gen space. Now for the major collection, you'll also get the detail on your perm gen space. All right, so this is the total heat that you see. So young gen and old gen, the perm gen is here. Again, you get the elapsed time. As you can see, much more intrusive, right? For the major collection. Minor collection were at the beginning 0 0.005 extremely fast, and then the major collection are taking in my environment about half a second. So it's not that big a deal, but the real problem is is a complete depletion, right? So you can see it's it's fairly straightforward, right? Well, once you understand the pattern of analysis, before after capacity, uh, once you understand that the short object, short live object, and long live object are split between these two. The perm gen again is separate space, as you probably heard soon to be the commission with probably Java 8. So don't worry about this one for now. Um, it's quite straightforward. So that's bottom line, it allows you to track down major collection, most important, and the frequency of such major collection. So you can correlate with slowdown condition of your application. Now, let's close this video with an explanation of this one. The good thing also, the verbal GC, it provides you a full breakdown. It's in a more friendly manner, right? Similar like, like we just saw, giving you a quick view also of the, of the heap, right? At that point, when it was basically close to the uh, mirror condition. We can see the young gen was at 99%. That was just before the other memory, right? 99% of young gen, old gen, 99% used, and the perm gen, which as I said, we don't care too much because we ran out of Java heap, not perm gen space. When we're running out of perm gen space, that's a separate error that GVM is, is throwing, not in this case. So as you can see, problem is confirmed, Java heap depletion, plus we confirm that by looking at each of the individual lines. So I hope you did appreciate that uh, tutorial on Verbo GC. As you can see, you don't need any fancy tool or anything. There are some very good monitoring tool out there, either commercial or like JVisual VM, which you can visualize that with nice graph and everything. So I always recommend that you use these tools. 
but I also highly recommend that you learn how to analyze the raw data because there are some scenarios that you will need that because the verbo GC the real benefit it's that it's persisting the data to a log so if you don't have any monitoring tool that your client is using I highly recommend that you turn on verbo GC for your production environment it's not intrusive it doesn't cause any impact or performance plus it will give you historical data from a Java heap footprint perspective and garbage collection to figure out the root cause of your production or your development problems so thank you for uh, your attention on the video and uh, you can expect other video pretty soon again thanks for visiting my blog and also watching this video. Have a good day.